So we look at uh, probability. So we are very lucky. The coverage has been shrinked. So we only have a few things to talk about. Just up to conditional probability. So the first page, we give the basic information that you need to have, and then we'll answer the Taylor sheet. So a reminder <clears throat> from sets. You guys know that if you have A, you unite it with its complement, what you get is the universal. Suppose we say E is the universal. One, two, we also know that A intersecting with its complement, we get empty. <coughs> Excuse. So if this is the case, we also know that We also know that if we get A intersection B complement, this is the same as, if this is A, this is B. A intersection B complement is this section here. Meaning that we can as well describe this using A uh, minus, sorry. So A minus just the intersection of the A and B. From this Venn diagram here. So when we get the probabilities now, so now the rules, as I will call them. Rule number one for probability. You say the probability, or first before I put the probability, let me say that the total probability is one. If you are 100% sure that something is happening, then you say the probability of it happening is one. And then the list, the list probability is zero. And so the probability of the universal set is going to be one because the universal set is everything that you're studying, everything that you have, all the elements that exist anywhere, you call that whole space that contains them, the universal set. So the probability of that whole thing is one. So that the probability of an empty set is equal to zero. From this four now, we get that A, the probability of A union A complement is then going to be one. B, hello? Um, I don't understand. Which part the don't relation. you understand, please? The relation with the sets. Probability being related to sets. And the rules. Okay, I get. So when, when you get probability and go to the sets, 
Since what is prohibited itself, say study of the possibilities of happenings of some events, some prediction games. Okay, so you have, okay, what's the chance that this thing will happen or this thing won't happen? Those things happening, we now place them in sets. Sets is just a collection of elements. Those elements, or we can say objects that are well defined. So you can define events and then put them in a set. So those events that you're predicting because you have taken them in sets, probit can follow there in that set. If I have the simplest example, if I have, if I have this, we call it a box, and then I place uh, some numbers, one, two, three, four. And then I want to pick n number here. What is the probability that I'm going to pick two? The probability that I'm going to pick two is there's only one two in here out of four numbers. So it is going to be one out of all the four numbers because there's only one two in here. But this box can also be called a set. So the probability of me having, if these are the only numbers that I have, the probability of me having A is then going to be one. Because I'm going to pick from these same numbers. If that's the only thing that I have, what is the chance that I will have this thing if I already have it? The chance is one, it's total probability. That's the only thing I have and I already have it. What's the chance that you're going to have something that you already have? It's one because you already have it. So now that's how we take probit into sets because sets is a collection of events. Probability is the prediction of the happenings of those events. Now you have collected them and put them in a set. Because you put them in a set, you can go there with a probability, which is a number that predicts the happening of those things. So if my set is empty, obviously I don't have anything in that set. So the probability of having something out of nothing is zero. That's why I say the probability of empty is zero. And the reason why Sir, I say, hello? Is this the test board? Yes. Haven't even gone, huh? All right. Mm -hmm. Sam. Hello. Then again, we've gotten the probability of A union A complement here. Yeah. Does it mean that A union A complete complement is a universe? And then the probability of the universe is one. The probability of the universe is one. Why is it one? Because it's the total probability. It's the total probability. Whatever you are studying is in, is in it.
Um, so we can't get anything. Sir, the sign is on you. I think I'm back. Are you getting me now? Yes, sir. Okay. So we are saying that uh, the reason why we say the probability of A union A complement is one is because you've brought everything that you want to study. You already have everything with you. So you have put it in the universal. All chances expected are together. What is the probability that you're going to have that thing? Because you already have one. It's the whole universal. So it's one. It's a total probability. That's why we say the probability of A union A complement is one. Because A union A complement gives us the whole universe. Sir. Hello. Mm, kindly explain uh, about uh, the, the list and uh, empty. So about the list and empty. In the empty, we are saying that there's nothing there. There's no event there. You have a set which has nothing. A set of events. Now there's no event in that set. What is the probability that an event which does not exist in that set will happen? It's zero. If I give you this, this is empty. What is the probability that one is in this empty? It's zero because there's nothing here. When we say list, we mean zero is less or equal to probability, which is less or equal to one. You can never have a negative probability and you can never have a number bigger than one called a probability. The start of chances has been restricted to only between zero and one. So when we say the list, we mean zero, where it starts from. The total, we mean one, the end point. If it's, we take it in an interval form. Okay, we move C. The probability of A intersection A complement. Remember A complement, A intersection A complement is empty. So it's a bit is zero. C, the probability of A intersection B complement is then the same as the probability of A minus the probability of A intersection B. So this is D. This is just because we have said these two are equal. So having the probability of this is the same as the probability of this. The probability of A complement is the same as one minus the probability of A. Hello. Hey, is that the way D is supposed to be written? Hey, you know, 
Is that yeah. how it's supposed to be? Uh huh. What's the difference from yarn and top? Yarn and top. The one you said is equal to number three. Number three is A intersection B component is equal to A minus A intersection B. Applying the probability on the left, the same as applying the probability on the right. Yes, and this is number three is equal to so I not say a minus ah. say it in full. Ah, I don't know, they just look different, so they are confusing me. Sir. Yeah. How, how is the probability of a plus the probability of the a complement equal to one? How is the probability of A union A complement equal to one? A union A complement is a universal set. Universal set is the total number of all the elements that you have. It's the total collection of all the elements that you can have. No, sir. I meant the one on letter E. On E? Yes. E is the probability of A complement is equal to Y minus probability of A. So when you bring it this side, you put a plus, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same as union, the plus, huh? It will be the same as the union. Look at this. The probability of A in the, I mean, of A union B. I give a general statement now. Probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A. Probability of A plus the probability of B. Now look at this. This is A, this is B. A, B. Probability of A union B. I said it's a bit of A, meaning this A. Plus the bit of B, this one. Meaning that we have added something twice. The intersection of A and B has been added in black and also in red. So the number we'll get here won't be a correct number. So to have a right number as a probability, we must subtract the intersection once. Now, because of this, if you go back to the reason why this is true, because you are saying, a bit of A union A complement. Hello? Sir, me, I still don't understand the D. D is a concept that is purely based on sets. If you have A intersection B complement, by shading, you only get this section. Suppose A have some other elements here, say one, two. What you have shaded does not include one and two. So how can you describe what you have shaded if you are to use the minus? You will say, I have the whole A, except that I have left out one and two. Because one and two is not shaded, so I've left it out. But one and two is sitting in the intersection of A and B. 
That's why it has been left. So this thing shaded here can also be described as A minus the intersection of A and B. This is the same as saying A intersection B component. Exactly the same. Now, because they are the same, if you want the probability of A intersection B component, it is the same as getting the probability of A minus the probability of A intersection B because they are the same. That's how we obtain. Now coming from E, I mean from F, going to G, using this formula here, then we'll say probability of A union A complement is the probability of A plus the probability of A complement minus the probability of A intersection A complement. But we all know that A does not intersect with its complement. The intersection is empty. There's nothing that can be in A at the same time be outside A. So because of that, we say that this intersection is empty. So because it's empty, it's the probability is zero. So all we remain with is the probability of A union A complement to be now equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A complement. But look, we just say that this probability here is one from here. So we have one is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A complement. You can solve for n of them. One, you can solve for a complement by taking probability of a the other side. So you say one minus the probability of a. Two, you can solve the probability of a by taking a complement the other side. So you have one minus probability of a complement. You can be given any probability. If you know these formulas, it will be easy for you to to find the solution because you just place the formula depending on what you've been given. How you will know which formula to use, you look at your question, see what you have, and remember which formula have that thing and the thing that they ask you to get. Uh, Hello. Well, can you do maybe other examples, not but like not concerning my six, like other examples of probability? We'll, we'll find them in the church. But you must know that. Eh? When going to the exam, this is what you're going to find. Sir, just give us examples depending on this test. Don't worry, I've questioned the solution. Then we also say there are terms that we use in probability. One. Sir. Hello. Sir. Hello. I'm kind of asking for the previous board. I'm kind of asking for the previous board. Okay. Thank you. Major exclusive events. So we say events A and B are mutual, are mutually exclusive if the intersection is empty.
So events A and B are mutually exclusive if the intersection is empty. What does it mean? The probability of the intersection should then be equal to zero because the probability of an empty set is zero. Two, independent events Hi. events a and hello sir speak some slow and then what's this about number one <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naming things now. If you find that A intersection B is empty, you say A and B are mutually exclusive. That's what it means. What do you mean by mutual? Intersection is empty. Mutual is the pairing. So in a state pair is mutual. So, sir, just a question. Uh -huh. Is it also okay to say, since you are talking about the mutual exclusive, is it also okay to say, meaning the, the members which are in, there is no any member which is in set A, which is also found in set B? That's what empty means. When you say the intersection is empty, you mean there's no, there's no term which is, there's no element which is in both sets. Nothing is in common between those sets. Then you say events A and B are independent if the probability of A intersection B is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. To be independent, you mean that two sets the happening of the other event does not affect the happening of the other event. Three, conditional probabilities. So you say the probability of A happening given that B has already happened. Meaning the happening of A, depending on the happening of B, we say it's given by getting the intersection and then you divide by the B which has already happened. So we read the probability of B given that A has already occurred is the probability of A intersection B over the probability of A.
<laughs> nice. Nice area yeah, understanding. So this means that if if events A and B are independent, then so. <laughs> Explain something on the third one. Okay, that's how you, that's how you are. If events A and B are independent, then you are saying the probability of A happening is not affected by the probability of having B happen. Because since A and B are independent, the occurrence of the other don't affect the occurrence of the other. So even if B happens, it will change nothing to the happening of, of A. So this probability will remain probability of A. So that the probability of B, given that A has occurred, is then going to the probability of B. This only happens when they are independent. Sir, Hello. what's the difference between this one and the second one? Because it's also saying independent events. This is just saying independent. So we say two, two events are independent if this is the case. We're also giving another condition, another um, state where you can depict independence if you have the conditional probabilities. If you find that the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A, then you can also say A and B are independent. Because the happening of the other doesn't affect the happening of the other one. So you need to get these formulas nicely, keep them safe, and don't forget when you go in the exam. This is where probability ends. What is the meaning? I just examples and the situations where now you may not need to use sets directly. They will indirectly bring sets. Maybe they tell you this box, they don't call it a, uh, it a set, they call it a box but we still know it's a set. And then you can dive into three diagrams and then get the information from there. Analyze, give them the, the, the probability. So those situations will find them in the terror sheet. So we're looking out, when you get back, we're solving the terror sheet now. So please, if you are late, you find the static. Thank you. 